Since I uploaded my Ace Beam X80 review, some people have posted, and I quote in their voice, This isn't the brightest flashlight, that's the Emelent DX80. Okay, noted. For a brief time, it was the brightest flashlight ever, the Ace Beam X80, so it wasn't wrong. But most reasonable human beings that watch this channel understand that. I think the DX80 shipped a month after my X80 review, so yeah. Or as probably not a subscriber, Tobias R. recently put it a few weeks ago, Immolent DX80 is brighter, not a clever use of this title. Then followed up my response to him, unironically I assume, a superlative is never an accurate title on YouTube. It's a sickness of our times. The Immolent DX80 is currently the brightest production flashlight you can buy, but those two to three experts can feel free to come back when this one is no longer the brightest one ever and waste some of their time. The DX80, according to Immolent's literature, is the end of darkness, which is a tall claim to make because, well, you know, uh, the sunrise. The DX80 uses eight Cree XHP 70.2 cool white LEDs to produce 32,000-ish verified lumens, by me. The DX80 is massive because it has to help dissipate that amount of heat that those LEDs generate. On the other hand, the Ace Beam X80 is tiny, gets hot fast. The Immolent is much more comfortable to hold long term without gloves. The Immolent DX80 is constructed out of micro brew keg grade aluminum, has beer glass grade lens, and an you know, aluminum orange peel reflector. Orange peel texture helps smooth out the beam artifacts in a multi-emitter light like this and adds about 10 seconds of explanation to this already long review. The light comes with a light, a lanyard, a manual, a holster, two spare O-rings, a power adapter for the country you live in, of course, unless you order the wrong version. The battery pack is integrated and you cannot swap out individual batteries, which takes error out of the hands of potential idiots who wanted to power this light off of a combination of laptop poles and blue trust fires. Battery jokes, bro. The battery pack is said to consist of eight 3000 milliamp hour high discharge 18650s, so good for it. Charging is accomplished by lifting the rubber charge port cover and plugging it in. The power adapter, of course. The little OLED screen blinks as it charges. Charge time from a completely drained light after one of my runtime tests is a little over three hours, which is great as far as charging time goes, but not great as far as being interesting. So let's look at those output levels. My figures in emulants are on the screen. First is low mode, which is not a moonlight mode, but it's good for when you don't need a ton of light. Then is middle low. Not to be confused with, which is next, of course, middle. I got quite a bit higher on this mode than Immolent's claimed 1500 lumens, which may affect run times. The middle high, also quite a bit higher than 5000 lumens. That also may affect run time if the mode runs higher than its claimed lumen value. And now we're back on track with the lumens on high mode. Mind you, I had to modify my lumens device a bit because of the head size of the light. Then we have turbo which is right under the claim and well within my margin of error. Just remember, my numbers should provide basic estimates only. The user interface. Before using your flashlight for the first time, unscrew the battery tube and remove the clear plastic film from the positive end. Or just leave a nasty one-star review on the product page and file a PayPal claim immediately. Okay, jerk, don't do that. The operation is simple, even for dumbasses. It's one click to turn it on and single clicks to advance modes. It cycles in order from the lowest 120 lumen mode to the highest 13,000 lumen mode and loops over starting from low again. Press and hold to turn it off. To get to 32,000 lumen mode, double click from on or off. The light has mode memory for 120 lumen to 15,000 lumen mode, but turbo ain't saved in a mode memory and neither is strobe. So to get to strobe, you gotta double click into turbo and then double click while in 32,000 lumen mode to get strobed hard. Click again to get destrobed back into turbo. You can triple click rapidly at any time to check voltage and battery level on the handy dandy OLED screen. You can also lock the light out by pressing and holding from off and then pressing and holding to unlock it. There's a little lock symbol that pops up. To be honest, 
though just loosen the battery tube to avoid turning it on accidentally. This is called a mechanical lockout. Runtimes. I logically use the included battery pack for all tests. I put my lux meter in the frame as a basic numeric measurement device to see how much output drops. And it's not scientific because I'm just an idiot YouTuber. Turbo, or 32,000 lumen mode. Over the course of three minutes, you get about an 11% drop, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of down to 28,000 lumens. A little less than three minutes in, it hits that big drop and bumps down between the 7,000 to 8,000 lumen range. And it maintains that constant output until light stops coming out at one hour and 34 minutes. That's a long time to hold over 7,000 lumens. My test wasn't perfect because I had to reposition the light so I could read my lux meter, but I think you get the idea. My camera screen is slowly dying, so unless the test is terrible, I stick with what I got. You can buy me a new camera if you're mad about it. Immolent claims one hour and 25 minutes on this mode for runtime. So, cool. Next we get, say it with me. Hi. Again, I screwed the first minute of this one up, so let's forget and notice a 4 percentage drop over the first 5 minutes. We're still at about 13,000 lumens, but we get a big drop around the 5-ish minute mark. Imelin says 10 minutes, but it's 5-ish here, where it drops to a little over 7,000 lumens. At about an hour in, we're slowly dimming, still over 6,500 lumens, and it shuts off putting out 6,500 lumens still. Imelin says 2 hours and 10 minutes on this mode. I get an hour and 45. And because YouTube people like myself have no concept of what constitutes visual boredom, here's 5,000 lumen mode. We start out a little over 7,000 lumens, and within 10 minutes we're at 6,700 lumens. One hour in, we hit 6,400 lumens. Then it runs for two hours, and we hit 6,100 tedious lumens, and at two hours and eight minutes in, it dies, putting out still about 6,100 lumens. Immelin says three hours and nine minutes, I would assume... My runtime is lower because this mode runs higher than they say, at least in my testing, as far as runtime theory goes. And finally, I'm not going to do any more than this 1500 lumen mode, which according to me runs brighter at 2700 lumens than the claimed 1500 lumens. Want to bet it runs less too? Okay, how about a 12 pack? Over the first 10 minutes, we lose less than 1% brightness, meaning we're still over 2700 lumens. And when the one hour mark hits, we've lost 3% brightness. So that's like 2,600 lumens. Two hours passes, we're still the same, and we're all a little older. Three hours, we're still above 2,600 lumens. And then when it finally shuts off at an hour more than a weed joke, we're at 2,600 lumens. That's five hours and 20 minutes. Immelin says seven hours, so told you so. Okay, what about how hot it gets? The body is much larger than the X80, so there's more area to hold on to on the back of the light. At about 10 minutes in, the hottest part near the reflector is about 135 Fahrenheit, and the tail is about 110 Fahrenheit. You can probably manage without gloves or in cooler weather, but gloves are a good idea on this sort of light. Plus, they look tactical, like something out of the Beat It video. I haven't used that joke in a while. Okay, beam shots. Here are the lights I'll be comparing. The Immolent DX82. We have a thousand-ish lumen EDC light and a bunch of big lumen lights. The whole point of here is to give the viewer a frame of reference as to what different lumen values are. Here's me in the very back of my yard. Most flashlights you can buy at the store are less than a thousand lumens. Remember, shit don't look as bright on video as it does in real life. First, the lumen top prints. They're very fancy, fancy brass flashlight that I never use. Well, I mean, I guess I used it here. Are you calling me a liar? This is your context light and a very common lumen value on what you pay $200 for on a Surefire. Flashlight joke. Now the Immolent DX80. Other than modded lights, you can't buy a brighter handheld light. Maybe there's some high-end military stuff. I don't know, I ain't in the military. But this is legit the brightest flashlight most consumers can ever buy. At least for a few months, I'm sure. For fun, go to Home Depot or Walmart, or your favorite store, and look at the flashlight section. It's okay, I won't tell anyone. And look at the ANSI lumen ratings on the packaging. Now the Ace Beam X80. It's about 10,000 lumens less. I like this light less because it's tiny and has a bunch of Christmas tree colored lights that most people will never use, which are annoying to scroll through. The Immolent has more light overall and throws further overall. It's brighter, it's bigger, but you can see that.
Let's go to the other emulant that I have, the DT70. Eh, it kind of gets lost in the mix now because it's, you know, not the brightest light. Maybe you can find it on sale somewhere. I don't know. Maybe someone will give it to you. I won't. Cool white tint, just like the DX80 here, which is 20,000 lumens more, you know? Now the Ace Beam X45, probably my second favorite light over 10,000 lumens. Like, that's a thing. I like the tint and the larger size, my favorite tint in a big lumen light here. The DX80 has no visible PWM on the modes and is a cool white tint. Now the Nightcore TM16GT. This has the longest beam distance in the whole bunch. That's why it you know, doesn't look like it has a lot of spill, but it kind of does. Remember I did a video on lumens and candela a while ago that helps explain those numbers below. I'll link it at the end. Just because it has a lot of lumens does not mean a light is good at long beam distance. I have lights under 2,000 lumens that can throw farther than the DX80's 32,000 lumens. Now finally the BLF Q8, which is a $50-ish light that I very recently reviewed. A great value if you're not into insane amounts of brightness like this and don't have a lot of money to spend. Go check out that review and all of my other reviews of these lights if you're a dork like I am. Um, okay... Hopefully this has been better for you than it has for me. If you want the maximum lumens in a flashlight, well, I guess this is it. I occasionally have seen it go in the mid $200 range, but it normally sits in the $300 to $380 range. It is much brighter than the Ace Beam X80 and doesn't have Christmas tree mode, so that's a bonus, I guess. The build quality on this light is solid, although I did see some very early reports of QC issues. I have experienced no problems with the light, as hopefully a review where I literally have the light on for hours and hours and charge up multiple times proves. I wish I could tell you why anyone needs a light this bright, but I didn't major in flashlight philosophy, just dad jokes. If you like this review, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram, give it a thumbs up. Gearbest provided this light for review, and you can support this channel by buying it through my links below and watching all my videos all the way through even if you're not interested in them. Thanks for watching.